What's up guys, it is Nicholas aka The Neelogy here and today I'm going to be doing my review on the ASUS 1070 Strix Edition. So first off, when I pre first purchased this card, I purchased it for $449.99 on Amazon.com. That was a couple months ago. Currently you can get it for $419.99 for the OC Edition, which just comes factory overclock, there's no performance difference. Base clock edition is $418.99. So really whatever one you can find at your retailer of choice, that's the one I would end up going with. So, first off, let's talk specs. 1070 is packing 8GB of GDR5 memory, which destroys 1080p, and at 1440p, really excels, and that's where its sweet spot is, in my opinion. It's packing 1920 CUDA cores, all clocked at 1506 MHz on the base clock edition. On the factory overclocked edition, it comes at 1860 MHz, so I mean, there's a good, if you're not going to be overclocking, this, the factory overclocked edition is what you'd want to go for. I mean, it's a dollar difference, at, at least right now on Amazon. TDP of 150 watts, which 150 watts isn't bad whatsoever compared to, I believe the 980Ti was actually at 165, and this this trade blows with the 980Ti. That's crazy for a $450 card trading blows with it. I believe the 980Ti when it came out. Was 650, I believe. Um, for a single card system, it's recommended 450 watts, and for a dual card system, it's 650 watts. But if you're going to be overclocking your CPU and GPU, I might recommend another 50 watts in there just to be safe. The physical dimensions of this card, it is 11.73 inches long. I mean, it's a big card. I mean, it's in my system back here in the uh, NZXT S340 Elite, which I have a review coming up on that too. Um, and it's actually 5.28 inches wide, which it's it's crazy. When I got the 390 Nitro from Sapphire, I thought that card was big. When I saw this thing, I couldn't believe it. So let's talk about looks. Obviously, the card is just flat black, black backplate, the uh, brushed aluminum black backplate, uh, all black cooler, RGB lighting. Um, I'm glad they went with an all black card and then RGB because I've seen some cards where even if it has just one other color on it, it kind of ruins the RGB, unless you're going, like the Zotac uh, Amped Edition, I believe it is, it's got yellow push the limit on the back. What's the point of having an RGB, if you're trying to match your whole system like I have, if it's got yellow on it, then you're limited to a yellow system, or yellow is your secondary color. I'm glad they went with an all black edition. Speaking of that back plate, the brushed aluminum, I'm usually not a fan of the brushed aluminum, I actually own a GL502 uh, Asus ROG laptop. That is a brushed aluminum top, and touching it, it fingerprints, fingerprint magnet everywhere. With it being a graphics card, I don't touch it every day. I'm not opening and closing it, obviously, like I would the laptop, so it's not as big of a deal. Unless you're reviewing it, obviously, because then you get quite a few fingerprints on it. So, performance-wise, this card destroys 1080p. Like I said, 1080p, this card, 60 FPS, 144 hertz, whatever one you, whatever your panel will push, this card can do it. But... You really shouldn't be looking at this card for 1080p as much as 1440p, which is where I really think this card excels. Uh, the only game I had trouble pushing on my uh, Acer Predator panel, it was Witcher 3, because that panel is 1440p and it is 144Hz, and Witcher 3 is a demanding game, very demanding. On ultra settings, and again, I was on ultra settings, you could crank those down and probably get up to 144Hz. I could get 85 on Ultra. That's that's totally respectable. I mean, that's amazing. I couldn't have even dreamed of that on the Sapphire uh, when I was in the R9 390. That, that, that was a good card, too. So, performance-wise, I'm hoping in the future to have graphs from Excel to show you guys on different games, the frame rates, and then as the channel progresses, kind of the GPU standings, like where everything rates between each other. But at the moment, I don't have that set up. So, now... The elephant in the room, of course, is 4K. I've seen forum posts. I tr personally didn't get to test this on 4K because I don't own a 4K panel, so I couldn't do it. I am looking at buying a 4K panel in the future for testing and to see how these cards run at 4K, but at the moment, I don't. The forum posts that I've seen about the 4K, people asking, should I go for 1070, should I go for a 1080? It's a resounding answer of the 1070 is not a 4K graphics card. I'm sure if you wanted to push low graphic settings, do 4K, you might be able to do it on certain games. But the 1080 is going to be an all-around better performer. Same to be said about multi-panel gaming. 
If you're doing three 1440p, I don't know about 1080p though. Three 1080p monitors might you might be able to do it. Single 4K monitor, like I said, it's gonna be hit or miss. But that being said, this is a great card for 1440p. But next, I want to talk about thermals and acoustics. So I've never had any thermal problems with this card. Even the only time I had any problem, uh, slightly a problem, was when I was over collecting the GPU and the CPU trying to get a silent system, I noticed my temps were getting a little higher than I'm comfortable with. I wasn't anywhere near TJ Maxx, but it was higher than I'm comfortable with, so I backed it down. Acoustic-wise, it's not its not any louder than any graphics card I've heard. It's actually very quiet, unless you crank the fans to 100%, which, I mean, then it sounds like your computer is a drone it's trying to take off and fly around the room. But that's to be expected. If you're at 100%, you should know what you're getting into and you're probably doing some pretty extreme overclocking or you're just seeing how loud the fans are. Going through heaven and stuff with that overclock, that was when I started seeing it getting up higher than what I was comfortable with. It's not really going to be a problem in normal everyday use. That all being said, that's all I can say about this review. I've had good experience with it. It's actually what I'm repping in my, uh, my build right now, Raja, which is beauty right here. I've been running that card for three months, three months, and I love it. I mean, that card is amazing. The 390 that I had, actually I passed it on a brother, and he loves his card now. I'm hoping to do more of these graphics card reviews in the future as I upgrade or hopefully get sent graphics cards if I can. This whole video is actually shot on my D3400. I'm really excited about this camera. And the B-roll you guys are about to see, which I'm excited about too, is all shot on this camera. The only thing I didn't like was the, uh, I didn't realize they removed the 3.5 jack, but that's for another day. Um, so hope you guys enjoyed the B-roll. See you guys in a couple minutes. Alright guys, so that's the B-roll, those are the glamour shots. I'm still practicing with the camera, still getting better, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. Down in the description is my Instagram and my Twitter, so you guys can follow me and keep up to date on what I'm doing on the channel. It really helps me out, especially if you guys subscribe on here and put on the notifications. Throw me a like if you liked the video, throw me a dislike if you didn't like the video. Tell me why you didn't like the video, don't just dislike it, please. Uh, I'm trying to get better at this. I want these to be professional. I want to get better. I can only do that with your guys' help. It really means a lot to me if you guys watch this. Thank you so much. So, anyways, that's the end. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.